Oh, that was awesome. Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, squids and normies, it's officially a motorcyclist's favorite time of the year. There is a span of about three days in late November when we get totally inundated with new bikes, new concepts, and even some radical news from manufacturers. If you're a diehard enthusiast, you know that EICMA 2021 is upon us. It's the year's biggest motorcycle press event and trade show extravaganza where everyone goes out to try to flex as much as possible. And boy, we've got some awesome news for you today. A totally reworked supercharged Kawasaki, brand new Italian bikes, surprise ADV bikes, and a legendary namesake on the comeback. Later on in this week, Spite is going to pick his best of from EICMA 2021 as well, so make sure you check that out too. But for now, sit back and relax. Today, we're going to be checking out the best news and the coolest new bikes from EICMA 2021. By the way, hit subscribe. We're less than 10,000 subscribers away from revealing the almighty Turbo Hayabusa. Do it. Speaking of big power bikes, first up on our video today is the all-new and reworked Kawasaki Ninja H2 SXSE. You guys are probably familiar with Cowie's insane H2 lineup. We even did a ZH2 as a giveaway bike earlier this year, and that thing was insanely idiotic and fun to ride. But in a world where sport touring bikes are taken over, the H2 SX SE is actually a very important motorcycle for Kawasaki to get right with and to compete with other flagship sport touring options. Or maybe it's a hyper sport touring or a hyper travel touring. Who knows? These categories are getting a little crazy. For 2021, Kawasaki has thrown everything, including the kitchen sink, at the supercharged bagger. Keeping with Ducati's new radar technology, the new H2 has advanced rider assist systems with adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning so that before you yeet yourself into a tree with your 216 wheel horsepower motorcycle, it is the decency to ask you to slow down on your TFT dash and it has blind spot detection features as well. Radar-assisted motorcycles are going to become more popular and more prevalent as the tech trickles down, and it wouldn't be far-fetched to see these improvements on entry-level bikes too in the future. If that wasn't enough, the fluttering, whistling beast now has tire pressure monitoring systems, vehicle hold assist, and remote key fob functionalities. To keep up with other flagship offerings, it has a 6.5-inch TFT display, heated grips as standards, USB ports, and some seats that are a little bit wider to allow for more comfort. The engine is also fitted with the new exhaust, cam timing adjustments, and a revisions to second gear, along with the slipper clutch making it simpler to find neutral. The bike also comes with electronic suspension control, because of course it does. In terms of styling, Cowie has kept it pretty boilerplate and has only marginally changed the look of the H2. I always thought it was a purposeful and imposing bike, and it should look like that. I personally don't like the way it looks with the bags on the side, but hey, if you're a sport touring dad with a cocaine addiction, accept no substitute. The bike's going to come in at $27,500, and while you might think that's crazy money for a Kawasaki, I think that when you compare it to a Ducati Multistrada or a Goldwing, it offers a ton for the money and a unique value proposition. There's very little on the road that feels like an H2, and it's cool to see Kawasaki investing in this platform. Though, if it were my money, I'd probably just get a standard 2015 plus H2 and slap a ridiculous flash on there and get the thing making 300 wheel horsepower and trying to eat turbo high. Hayabusa's. Lord knows it'd be more reliable than the Turbo Hayabusa anyways. Quick ad break for you guys here. Today's video is proudly supported by Manscaped. Did you know Manscaped is going pubic? I mean, going public. Yes, the company has sold over 4 million ball shavers worldwide and is absolutely crushing it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that my salesman tactics helped propel them to an IPO, but hey, I'm also not going to say that it wasn't totally my doing. Manscaped makes the finest in men's grooming tools, but they also sell a new body wash and everything else you need to keep clean and smooth. The best part of all, everything is 25% off on their store for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Hit the link down below and treat yourself to some highly discounted Manscaped goodies. No discount code, no nothing like that. Just hit the link down below, 25% off store wide. There's never been a better time to clean yourself up and save some cash. Big thanks to them for supporting what we do and be sure to check them out in the link down below. Up next, we gotta talk about this new Moto Guzzi V100 Mandelo, or the Mandelo as I'm gonna call it because it sounds like an early 20th century French gigolo. This bike is a serious departure for Guzzi as they're known for making the authentically old school air-cooled cruiser styled bikes. As basically with all other Guzzi's, it features a transverse mounted V-twin, but this one is now liquid cooled for the first time, dual overhead cam, four valve, wet sump, and even with a hydraulic clutch. It displaces 1042 cc's and 
makes 113 horsepower and 77 foot-pounds of Targarinamos. It even revs out to 9500 RPM, that's pretty darn high for a Moto Guzzi. The thing that's got everyone hot and bothered about the Mandelo is the active aerodynamics this bike comes with. On the side of the tank, you've got a pair of wind deflectors, they're not exactly winglets, mind you, that will protrude outward helping to deflect wind. The windscreen is also electronically adjustable, and while I think this is an interesting idea, I'd have to ride the bike and see if it makes an actual difference while you're out on the road. Moto Guzzi claims it reduces 22% of the air pressure on the rider, but in my opinion, this is a bit of a needless complication for a motorcycle that won't really add much in the way of features or benefits. I think it should just have a simple, quick adjustable windscreen, and that's it. The bike also comes equipped with a six-axis IMU, a first for Guzzi, a suite of electronics including rider modes, engine maps, traction control, cornering ABS, and cornering lights. The top of the range is also equipped with the Olin Smart EX 2.0 semi-active suspension, quick shifter, and heated grips. For a company that's mainly dealt in old-school cruisers, air-cooled engines, and largely traded upon the heritage of the models they make, this is a really cool addition to the lineup. It reminds me a lot of what Harley did with their Sportster S and Pan America models. It's a welcome technological leap forward for a company that is traditionally making old-school bikes. The V100 name also comes from the 100 years that Moto Guzzi has been around, by the way. I think this bike will probably hit showroom floors costing about $16,000 or $17,000. It's positioning itself as a premium luxury touring option with a sporty character. With this displacement power and price point and the style of the bike that it is, I'd wager that Moto Guzzi is targeting the upmarket sport touring options or maybe even luring away some wannabe adventure bike owners. The Mandelo is a handsome looking machine that should spur on some new Moto Guzzi customers who want to try something pretty unique and pop out their little winglets at bike night to show off to their buddies. Okay, next up is the two new MV Agusta adventure bikes. Yes, the onslaught of middleweight ADVs and sport touring bikes continues in 2021 with the addition of the new 9.5 and 5.5 models from MV Agusta. In case you're unfamiliar, these two bikes are drawing upon the old school Kajiva Dakar racers, the Elephant. MV has been teasing this concept through their Lucky Explorer series online, and now we have the full scoop. First, let's look at the styling of this bike, which, I'll be honest, looks a little bit like the Africa Twin and the Ducati Desert X had a baby. I don't think it's terrible looking, but I also think it's missing a lot of the MV styling DNA. Since MV is serious about this being an off-road bike, it doesn't have the signature single-sided swing arm or any of the farkles we've come to know and love on the ostentatiously spicy Italian bikes. The bikes also include front disc brake covers, hand guards, bash plates, and a 7-inch TFT. I don't know how much bigger we can go here, folks. This is getting a little ridiculous. So these motorcycles definitely look the part, but what exactly is the difference between the 9.5 and the 5.5 models? Well, they're named after their engine displacements. The 9.5 is the flagship ADV rocking a stroked and bored out version of the 798cc triple with 930cc, and the 5.5 is utilizing a 550cc parallel twin by a Chinese company called QJ. We now live in a world where MV Agusta is making parallel twin entry-level ADVs using Chinese engines. Don't you love to hate global capitalism, folks? They've defiled your sacrosanct Italian bikes with a lawnmower Chinese two-pot. Sacrilege, heresy, an exodus for MV Agusta, banished from the house of Euro Semperi. Before you start grabbing your pitchfork, let's try to understand why MV did this and what the goal is. MV clearly wants some of that A2 compliant Honda CB500X consumer money. Although Chinese motorcycles have a reputation for being ultra cheap, unreliable junk, they've got substantially better over the years, and a 550cc P-Twin that's relatively understressed is probably being built and enjoyed by tens of millions of people overseas in the Asian markets. I think the Kajiva Elephant in the room, pardon the wordplay, is the reliability and performance of these bikes. Not that ADV riders are all pole Taras, but they sure like to pretend that they can do 20-foot jumps with the ADV bikes they own, don't they? And they want to make sure their bikes can live through some spills and frills on the desert adventures they may or may not be having. And yes, I know what you're thinking. How do you make an MV Agusta more unreliable? Stick a Chinese engine in it. The jokes just make themselves, folks. It's too damn easy. Both bikes are using a steel dual cradle frame, but let's talk about the 9.5 for a second. It makes 121 horsepower at 10,000 RPM and 75 foot-pounds of Torginos at 7,000 RPM, which is just a perfect amount for all your gentle trail riding. I love having 121 horsepower on tap when I'm trundling along my favorite trail. 
You can get the bike with a normal clutch or a recluse auto clutch, similar to what we've shown you guys on the Veloce Turismo Lusso we've got back in the shop. It's got a 2118 wheel setup with eight and a half inches of travel up front and about eight and a half travel out back. It's not the best, but it's also not the worst. Semi-active suspension as well and a pretty generous 8.8 .8 inches of ground clearance. Given the claimed dry weights, we're gonna guess this thing weighs around 550 pounds, fully fueled and ready to ride, which is basically BMW 1250 GS or Pan America sized. 5.5 definitely feels like a Chinese bike that's been reskinned as an MV Agusta. It's going to make around 47 horsepower and 37 foot pounds of Torgos, right in line for the A2 market. And it basically looks to be an angrier, zestier looking Honda CB500X. Only time will tell how these bikes will do in the EU and in America if they make their way here, but if you guys thought that taking an Aprilia off-road was unreliable suicide, then go take a 550-pound MV Agusa to the desert and let me know how it goes. The last bit of news we have today comes from Honda, and it's short and sweet. They're reviving the legendary Hornet name. As you guys know, the Hornet is near and dear to my heart because it was the first giveaway bike we did, the legendary Hentai Hornet, and Spite owned one as well. We have very little information about what this thing is going to be, but we've been following news about Honda making a new naked bike using the Africa Twin engine for nearly two years on the Yamcast. The silhouette looks totally raked out, so that's not going to work for the motorcycle. The headlight looks very Wasp-like or even KTM-like. Time will tell what sort of motorcycle this will be, but expect to be something to compete with the KTM 890, Ducati Monster, Street Triple, Z900, MT09. Jesus, that's a crowded marketplace. All right, guys, one last request for you. If you've enjoyed the video, just smash the subscribe button for me. We are imminently close to revealing the Turbo Hayabusa, and I want to share that love with you guys. If we missed a bike you think Spite should discuss in his Eichma video later this week, let us know in the comments down below, and let us know about the bikes we featured in today's video. Catch you in the next one. See you later.